everybody. Welcome back to the MVMO podcast, my view, my opinion. I appreciate all of you guys for joining me today. I hope you're having a really good one. Okay. Listen, thank you to all of you been showing support as I'm slowly but surely getting back on the horse here on this YouTube channel and uploading content. Now, if you're new because you were searching for information about Kim Burrell and this came up on YouTube and your recommendations, you probably have some questions about me, the podcast format, why you don't actually see me or see videos or pictures. You see the static picture and you're only hearing my voice. All the information about that is in the description box. Okay. All you need to do is click down there. There's even a Q and a se section there. Okay. Now let me share my experience visiting Kim Burrell's church in 2017. And then I'm going to finish up with just giving you some general information because I like to come from the perspective of what can we learn from it. All right. So in 2017, I was traveling the United States because I had gotten this really nice job and it required me to be down there in Texas in Houston for three consecutive weeks. Okay. Okay. Well, I didn't know of any churches there. Of course, you know, you see stuff on television, but I didn't really know of any churches there. So I was Googling and smoogling and I found out that Kim Burrell had a church that was about uh, 20 to 30 minutes from where I was staying in the hotel. And I thought this is perfect. At the time, I didn't really know Kim had a church. I had just heard that she pastored somewhere, but it wasn't hers. It was kind of like she was just somebody on staff. I didn't know it was actually her church. Okay. So I decided, well, I'll just go visit on Wednesday. This is going to be perfect because for me, I always think, and not saying this is true. This is just my own personal opinion that Wednesdays or whatever the day, the church Bible study, any church's Bible study is on or prayer meetings. Those are the real parishioners. Those are the dedicated parishioners and churchgoers who show up on Bible study and prayer meetings. So for me, I thought to myself, well, I'll go on Wednesday. And if it's a great experience, then I will just go on Sunday. And while I'm here these three weeks, I'll just go there on Wednesday and Sunday. Well, I went. Wednesday came and I went. First, let me talk about the people. I have to tell y'all that from the time I pulled up, those people were so kind to me. I truly and genuinely can say to you that I felt a spirit of love from those people who were members of her church. Now, I didn't go with the expectation to see Kim, you know, but of course, you know, you're thinking to yourself, she could possibly be there, but it wasn't like, oh, I get to see. No, I just want to go to church. <laughs> That's me. And I, I want to go where my folk are. Okay. So these people were kind. Hi, how are you? They were speaking. They were kind, smiling, and it was genuine. It wasn't fake or phony. So we go inside and I'm just following these people. We go inside um, and I, I'm, you know, kind of looking around and all of that. And um, I would say I'm guesstimating it might have been that Wednesday, 60 people, maybe, maybe less, maybe 50 people. OK, there. So the service starts. And again, as I sit down, people are saying hi. Of course, you know, most of these people probably knew each other. So it was obvious I was a, a guest, you know, a visitor that I wasn't a regular there. So they were very kind. And I have to say those people were great. All right. As the church surface is going on, folks singing and whatnot, I see Kim get up, okay? And I was like, oh, well, Kim is here. This is what I said to myself. I'll get to hear Kim preach. At least that's what I thought I was going to get. I will tell you guys from the time Kim Burrell got up, and I suppose she was up there again, I'm guesstimating. I know it was over an hour. It probably was more like an hour to 15 to 20 minutes, something of that nature. That lady literally fussed at those people from the time she got up. Now she sang a few songs in between. She fussed from the time she got up from the, till the time she sat down. That was so odd to me. I felt so beat up and I, I wasn't even a part. You know, have you ever felt beat up at church? And I'm like, I ain't got nothing to do. This is what I'm thinking, y'all. Now I'm sitting there smiling and, you know, being a lady, because <laughs> I tell you about me, I'm one to walk out when some foolishness takes place. I'm just not going to be a part of foolishness. But, you know, these people have been so kind to me. I thought, you know, I don't want to be rude and walk out because, see, I don't have to hear all this. She ain't my pastor. And if she was, she wouldn't be after this right here that I've heard. But anyway, so she was fussing at them. And I'm telling you, nah, 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 nah. I mean, she was just nasty. She was nasty. And she had a confidence about herself to, to do it. Now, what was she fussing at them about? Let me tell you. She was telling them she she was supposed to have some conference in Atlanta. It was either called 
Now, this was 2017. So if my memory serves me correct, it was like Ephesians 3 or Ephesians 4, something like that. And what she was fussing at them about is that some of these people hadn't gotten there. They hadn't registered yet for the conference. They hadn't gotten their tickets yet and all of that. Now, I want to say something, and I mean this in the kindest way because I'm one of those people. I could look at these people and tell that they weren't people of means. They were not people of means. Kim Burrell, we assume, we don't know what her bank account is. We assume she's a woman of means, okay? She could be living from check to check too. You never know. But, you know, most of us, if we're honest, you know, we may have some savings and a few investments, but to our day-to-day life, we're just a few checks away, you know, from disaster. So I could look at these people and tell they probably didn't have the money to buy a plane ticket and, you know, clothes and reg- I don't know what the registration was, you know. And so she was fussing at them. But then she said this, she said, and I'm quoting because I'll never forget this. And I've shared it before. She said, and if I, and I'm, I'm doing what she was doing. And if I see you there at the conference, I ain't even going to speak to you because I don't get too familiar with people. And do you not know these people were clapping at this? See, it was so sad to me. I thought, do these people not realize what this woman is saying? This is what she thinks of them. You're not worth me speaking to. Now here, and I'm, this is me in my head. Now, mind you, I'm sitting there, you know, <laughs> looking all whatever, dainty, but I'm thinking to myself, Lord, I need to get up out of here. But I was thinking to myself, here it is. This woman is fussing at her congregants for not registering for this conference and all of that. But then in the same breath, she tells them, but if you do come and I see you, I ain't going to speak to you. And her reason was because I don't get to, which we know that was BS, right? I thought to myself, all these folks need to get up and leave right now. This woman doesn't have a heart for people. A pastor, a leader is supposed to have a heart for folks. That's not what you say when you have a heart for people. That's not what you say when you love folks. What I interpreted her public statements to be, in case you're listening, Miss Kim, I'm not saying this is what you meant. I'm just going to give my interpretation of your public statements. I am. I really thought what she meant was because, again, I can look at them and tell they weren't people of means. I really felt got the impression she was probably going to be embarrassed that what she wasn't going to really speak to them because, lo and behold, the folks should know, you know, all these big wig folk up in the Atlanta area, that these folks were her parishioners, that these are the folks that she passed her. I, I felt like she would be embarrassed by them. So she didn't want to have any association with them. She didn't want them speaking to her. And she said, I'm not going to speak to you. I mean, what sense does it make? I don't get too familiar with people. You know, we've all heard that crap in church. And she was like, that's how she stays out of the bed. Well, I would hope if one of your female parishioners walks up to you and speaks that you wouldn't be tempted to be in the bed with her. So see, it, it didn't make any sense. Her reasoning didn't make any sense. No, there was another reason why she wasn't going to speak to those people. And in my opinion of the public statements, it was because Kim sees herself up here and those folks down there. So I wasn't even a part of the uh, congregation. I felt beat up. And when I tell y'all, and I am not exaggerating to you, when I tell you that girl fussed at those folks from the time she got up to the time she sat down, I mean, I thought to myself, well, I thought I was going to hear her preach. But see, actually, I did. To me, that was you preaching. And again, if I if it hadn't have been for the fact that I didn't want to be rude to those people who had been so kind to me, I would have actually just you know, put up the finger. (laughs) Y'all know how we used to do in church and just exit it out. And actually I I went ahead and stayed, but I didn't go back. I didn't go. I was there for three weeks. I didn't go back on a win. See, I don't need to hear nothing else. See, all that right there was all I needed to see for myself. You are a nasty person. You have a nasty, mean spirit to speak to these people like this. So what they can maybe afford to purchase uh, the tickets. Who cares? The lights are on here. They showed up to hear you speak tonight. Is that not love and support for you? So as I end, I will say this. I saw for myself and I heard for myself the nastiness of this woman. And I will tell you, it's a real thing. It's not just a one off. I think this is who she is. Now, let me make this clear. I've never met Kim Burrell one on one. I've never had any conversations with her, but neither have I ever had a desire to meet or talk to her. But I will just say this. I don't know how anyone who's seen her consistent public behavior and it's been so nasty towards people can even hear her saying, you know, the worst thing I think that ever happened to Kim actually was that she had a gift. Well, let me let me rephrase that. The worst thing I think that happened to Kim is that she had a gift and somebody gave her stage because, see, in my opinion, and I don't know her, this is just my opinion of Kim's public behavior 
all the stuff that's out there on recording. This is my personal opinion of her public behavior. You know, Kim, no doubt was a fat child, a non-attractive child, maybe even bullied in school. I think the reason Kim, her nastiness always centers around, like even when she was talking to those people around money and materialism is because that what, that's what makes her feel like somebody. And she has a voice. You want to know something else she said that what struck me as odd too. And guys, again, I am not throwing shade. When I say it was odd, it was. As she was fussing at them, because I said she was singing in between these fussing stuff, she would be saying stuff like, and everybody trying to imitate my voice. I had no idea who Kim was talking about. I said, maybe she's talking about somebody in here. I know her sister was there because later her sister had written a book or something like that. Her sister got up and said something. But it's like, who Kim? I was thinking to myself, who? Kim does not have the best voice in gospel music or in the music industry, period. I don't know why this woman has such an inflated ego. But actually, I say that, but I do. You know, when you've always felt ugly and you were never picked, you were never the girl to be picked because you were fat, but you could sing. You hold on to that because that's what makes you feel good. You want to know what's probably going to happen to Kim because a piece of rotten fruit falls from a tree on its own. Nobody needs to shake the tree. Nobody needs to uh, jangle the limbs. It just falls. It's the natural process of things. If she loses that voice, if something were to happen and she loses that voice, Kim would just go back into obscurity. And none of us should take our gifts for granted to think we're going to always have them. Look at what happened with Whitney Houston. After so much abuse of her own physical body with drugs, her voice didn't sound the same. So we can say the gifts and callings of God are without repentance. That's true. But we can do things to damage what God has given us. All of us know that. So as I end, I will say this. God bless Kim Burrell because she needs it. She needs a good fashion, a good old fashioned dose of self-love because see when this is the way we speak to people publicly on a stage year after year after year, can you imagine what her internal talk is? See, we, it, it doesn't make sense to me that we would have positive self-talk and then go out and speak that way to people. No, it's coming from the outside, inside to the outside. That's how life works. The nastiness is already there. Who knows? She probably still sees herself as the fat, ugly girl that was badly shaped, that was never picked or chosen. Because you can't speak to people like that and have a positive self-talk. It's impossible. The way we treat ourselves, guys, the way that ongoing head talk that we all have, it's a reflection of us on the inside, and that's how we wind up treating people. That's why psychologists have said for decades and centuries, hurt people hurt people. You see, it starts from the inside. And as Kim is up talking and fussing at folks, I almost got the feeling she's trying to get back at these, uh, not those folks particularly, but you know, folks who bullied her, folks who see her now on a worldwide stage, and they kind of made fun of her in school or whatever, the guy who never wanted her, you know, whatever, you know, but now look at me, I got this, this, and that. And it's like, Kim, <laughs> Kim, those are not the real riches of life. Having people that really love you and care for you, those are the real riches of life. Money could be gone in a heartbeat. Fame could be gone in a heartbeat. But kindness and love and gentleness, you know, I suspect all the folks around Kim probably are there because of the money, because she can't treat them well. And I know I'm assuming a lot for having to having never met her. But I'll tell you guys, the way she's treated those pe her church folk, and I was there, I saw it, I heard it. I was beat up too with them as if I had done something <laughs> wrong. As if I didn't register for the conference. <laughs> There's no way this is, a, this is a person who loves themselves. I'm sorry, guys. You can't tell me she does. You can't. Because I know I've lived long enough to know life just doesn't work that way. Now, as I end, let me just say this. We don't know what's going to happen with Kim, but we know something's going to happen. You see, she's emboldened now. She's gotten away with this kind of behavior. And I suppose, I don't know, um, maybe, she, you know, that was 2017. I don't know if she still has a church now. But see, there's not really been that we can see publicly any real serious consequences to sit this woman down so she can reflect on herself. But, you know, life has a way, doesn't it? As I said, a piece of rotten fruit falls from a tree on its own. Nobody needs to do anything. It's rotten. So in the process of time, it will fall on its own. That's what's going to happen to Kim. So what this woman better hope is that nothing happens that destroys that little voice she got. Because she'll be faced to look at Kim. 
because it's not because of your sweet, gentle spirit that folks were inviting you. And I'm not going to speak on all the other things. The fact that she was even at Brian Carnes church and the quote unquote positive praise she was giving him. I think that says volumes itself. It's all about money for Kim. So guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Again, I will say this. I understand I've never met Kim. I understand that I don't know her. I don't know what she's really like. But I just have to assume that her consistent behavior over this long period of time is demonstrating who she is and what she's like. And I can be wrong about that, but I don't think I am. And I'll let God correct me if I am. But this woman is going to fall in some way, shape, or form because she doesn't love people. She doesn't. And she's taking her gift and she's literally abusing people verbally and then saying, you know, I've got the most, you know, look at, listen to this and then singing. Nobody wants to hear that crap after you mistreated people and talk to them like that. Nobody wants that. Keep your little old, as we used to say growing up, keep your stinking gift. (laughs) We don't want it. How are you going to talk to me all crazy and then sing a song for me and want me to praise God with you? The arrogance. So it's just a matter of time. So let's do this. This is what I want us all to do. Let's just observe it. Not to, uh, in a way of saying we're going to be, um, you know, victor- uh, have vitriol when she, when whatever happens, that lo- the, the course correction that's going to come to her. We won't be happy about it, but we can learn from it to know if we don't check ourselves, if we don't stay on top of ourselves. I don't know about y'all, but if I don't stay on top of myself, I can be impatient with people. I'm used to being my own boss. And I've seen in myself that sometimes I can see myself get really impatient. I'm having to work with myself on it. Because see, when you work for yourself or you work and you're doing this, or maybe you have the kind of job where, you know, you're pretty much doing something on your own and your boss is giving you authority to do whatever. However, as long as you get the work done, you can tend to then be impatient with folks when they're not moving as fast as you want them to. And so I will tell you, I'm having to stay on top of myself. And if you're being honest, you're going to have to stay on top of yourself too. It's just the way it is. It's like a hairstyle. It has to be maintained. It's good character. A gentle, loving spirit has to be maintained. And so I will tell y'all, let's just observe it and learn from it. Let's just check ourselves. Let's judge ourselves so that we're not judged. Let's apologize to folks for real when we do the wrong thing or we mistreat them. Not this crap that she did on Instagram. If you don't know about it, Google Smoogle and you'll find it. Let's be real. Let's not go out and and speak, treat people badly. Let's not take out our inner frustrations and inner hatred on other folks and try to make them feel bad because we, we really feel bad on the inside. That's what's happening with that girl. As far as I'm concerned, woman of God, where woman of God, who just because you can sing, no, honey, it's love. It's kindness. It's gentleness. It's saying, I'm sorry for real and meaning it. And then not doing it again. Or at least we should say we should see this type of behavior be less and less and less because that would be an indication of change. But it's just increased over the the last several years, which means she's emboldened now because she thinks what she's doing is right. So thank you so much for tuning in to this commentary regarding the recent incident with Kim Burrell and also my experience visiting her church in 2017. Thank you, guys. Have a fantastic day and I'll talk to you on the next one. Bye, guys. (laughs) Thank <laughs> you.